Hi everyone, so I'm starting a, a little experiment for myself. Um, one of my favorite pianists, Georgi Xifra, Georgi Xifra, uh, Georges Xifra in French because he was naturalized French actually. Uh, this guy in a video explains that he was practicing between 8 and 10 hours a day, including, including Sundays, for 8 years and described it as being a slave of piano. He had no time to go out to go for dinners. J'ai travaillé déjà comme petit sourire, des heures, des heures. Puis, comme résultat, j'étais engagé dans un cirque. J'avais cinq ans. Depuis cet âge, je suis esclave de la musique. Vous aviez des jouets quand vous étiez enfant Jamais. Jamais. J'ai joué avec mon piano, c'est tout. Vous avez trop travaillé Pendant 8 ans, presque sans arrêt. Presque sans arrêt Presque sans arrêt. 8 heures, 10 heures par jour. 10 heures Chaque jour, oui. Même au dimanche. Vous sortez de là épuisé Je ne sais pas. C'est un combat avec le piano Ah oui, c'est toujours comme ça. 8 heures, vraiment 8 heures, 10, 10 heures de travail par jour. Et après, moi, je suis mort. Hein? Alors, comment, comment je peux quitter la maison pour aller à Paris, pour aller... Chercher un grand restaurant avec un avec, 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 bien habillé, etc. Je ne peux pas. Mais uh, le résultat est le que nous savons, bien sûr. C'est l'un des plus incroyables pianistes qui a jamais vécu, et en particulier pour sa technique, pas pour diminuer ses capacités musicales et ses talents, bien sûr. So I just want to experiment this and see uh, what happens if I go to 10 hours a day. Now I will do it uh, increasingly. I will start with one hour or two hours a day. And then I will go one hour every day more until I reach 10 hours next week. So that's 10 days <clears throat> and see what happens. Uh, can I, do I get injured? Uh, do I, am, am I bored? I don't know what to practice uh, or do I give up? I, I cannot reach 10 hours. Actually, I did this when I was younger, when I was 20. I had to learn both Liszt Concerto and then at that time I was practicing. I had to learn it in one or two months uh, to rehearse it for an orchestra. So I was a bit on, under pressure and at that time I practiced a lot. I don't remember, I didn't cr track how long, but I was basically practicing all day with some stops. So this must have been 10, 12 hours, 12, 12 hours maybe. Um, sorry, I'm a bit sick. So that's what I'm trying, we'll try. I'm Momently I'm practicing the four last eight list etudes, two Rachmaninoff preludes and um, Maybe I will have some time to learn the scrubbing fantasy. I will do some exercise and I will do some sight reading just to fill the time when it gets to seven, eight, nine, ten hours. And I do it increasingly because I don't want, since I'm not practicing many hours a day for the moment, I don't want to go from uh, two hours, let's say, to four or to eight hours directly because I would, I think, I would just injure myself. So I'm just careful with this, uh, doing it progressively. So let's see. I will make some videos uh, in between telling my uh, feeling, my experience, how it went, how it's happening, and then I will do a final video of how it's, uh, what's the end result and what's my thoughts about it. So it's day two. I started yesterday, Tuesday, uh, practice two hours. Did I? Yeah. And today I'm almost done doing three hours. Actually, I was starting to think, practicing the list etude a bit, the Rachmaninoff, I did some exercise, and then I thought I'd do a bit sight reading. So today I was reading the six Brahms opus 18, opus 118, just to, I always like to discover some other, not to discover because I know it, but to, to keep reading pieces. Again and again, after a while, you start really knowing them well, and this always helps one day if you play, for example, the Brahms Ballad. Well, I did this before, of course, so I recorded the Brahms Ballad for myself. Before this, I, I was reading all of Brahms music, I think, yeah, everything actually, probably three big volumes, the concertos, not the chamber music, but I know the chamber music. Um, reading this for me, you know, you, you discover tons of stuff, harmonies. Um, this famous one here, <coughs> which I love, especially. So I love this passage here.
it's important. Um, I'm a big fan of um, knowing everything helps you to be better at one thing. It's the same philosophy as being good in many things help you being even better at one thing, specific thing. <clears throat> For example, if you want to be good at piano, you should be good for mathematics, chess, sports, uh, mechanics, physics, uh, uh, literature, read biographies, uh, good at sight reading, good at uh, the technical, good at the... Uh, yeah, the more, the more you discover new things and, and get better at, at other stuff, I think the better you become at one thing. Of course, you need to focus on this one thing. So today I'm almost done with three hours. Actually, uh, since some weeks I have a problem here on the left hand, it's hurting me when I stretch it. And probably because of the mistake, I'm always stretching this, this uh, number 10 here. And I try to be to not stretch it too, more, too, more, too much or to be relaxed in this passage. Um, sometimes it hurts a bit, so I'm curious if I will give up or continue or manage or if this... Uh, Problem will go away with practicing. Let's see. Hello, so today is day uh, five. So it's a uh, Tuesday. Yes, the fifth day of my practicing challenge of uh, 10 hours, like Sifra did. Um, I really enjoyed the, the experience actually, and uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I discover a lot of stuff I didn't have thought about. For example, I'm just suspecting that actually Sifra didn't really practice 10 full hours, but he probably had a frame of 10 hours where he practiced, or two times five hours, something like this, because I realize it's almost impossible in one hour to practice 60 minutes because um, just also because of tiredness actually you would practice one hour in the hour you would do uh, maybe two breaks after 20 minutes or one break after 30 minutes or something like this you cannot just keep practicing one hour with no stops so you are doing you just need stops and sometimes just your brain needs some stops or sometimes you want to drink so you have to stop or you go to the toilet so you have to stop also and then uh, today we have this telephone problem, of course, and people message everyone. So sometimes I have students asking me if he can change the lesson and then I have to go to my calendar and see if I can change the time. So, and um, now I, I'm tracking the time. I will show the stats uh, I did until now. I'm actually creating an app with a friend to track your practicing and other stuff that I will um, um, tell when, when the app is coming out. It's a secret for now. Um, yeah, and my app is not counting when I go out of the app. So if I have to text someone, it stops counting, which is a good thing because actually I'm not practicing when I'm texting someone. So if I really want to track how much I'm practicing, the app is doing this job very well. But then, uh, as I said, I realize it's difficult to practice 60 minutes in one hour. And also between two lessons, sometimes I have one hour and I thought optimistically, I thought there I have one hour, I can practice one hour, which doesn't happen because the student before um, leave let's say five minutes late because we have something to discuss or uh, just uh, you know you say goodbye and you say you close the door this takes some time and then you just realize there is something uh, there I need to for example water so I need to fill the water this is just takes five minutes it's always ten minutes it's already ten minutes over and uh, the same for uh, the next students coming sometimes he comes a bit uh, earlier or, or sometimes you just want, uh, want a small break between my practicing and the lesson because mostly when I just practice one hour and the students come I'm just uh, my head is like uh, I need sometimes just a small break to be in the teaching mode and go out of the practicing mode and when you practice one hour your head gets very tired so that then afterwards you need like some minutes to recover from the practicing and so tons of uh, lot, nice experience and so they said I did five hours so I practiced until 10 because of the lessons I had no time to fit it in between and I did some sport I did some stuff also I'm doing still lear learn learning a language so I'm trying to do this in the morning in the evening uh, and then you need to eat also sometimes so that also takes some time so you just realize it's it, it, 
yeah, the days are short actually when you really want to practice that many hours, full hours I'm speaking, because actually I could say myself, okay, I have one hour in between two lessons and then I, re I practice 40 minutes and I can count this as an hour, but I really want to count full hours of practice, like every minute I'm doing. Um, so I now I start to realize also that it's very exhausting. I started to have um, my hand are a bit tired actually, it's not really my, the, the thing was hurting there, it's going slowly away, I'm really careful with this and then as soon as I feel the tension gets too much, I start to do slow practice or I practice slow, slow pieces or something or I do mem memorization. Uh, my back hurt yesterday evening because of my position is not optimal, we try to say, but also sitting six hours at the piano is something I'm not used to, my back hurt a bit, my shoulders I feel are a bit tired, so the, my whole body is a bit suffering from it, uh, slightly, you know, nothing dramatic, and my finger also, I feel my, my fingers are really tired, but I start to come to this point, which I experienced before already when I did four hours a day, um, I feel this control is coming back, this absolute control where you feel you just can do everything, it's working and, um, and that's a very nice uh, feeling. So I wonder how it would be with six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, if this will even get higher or not. I also come on the limit sometimes on what I want to practice because yesterday evening, for example, I had 40 minutes left and I thought oh, I don't want to practice again the stuff I practiced today, I did it already a lot more than usual. So I just decided to play list sonata again, what I played before, just to pa to to go time um, to have some to fill the time actually, which is which is kind of practicing too because I'm going back to old pieces, keeping them a bit fresh, uh, moving my fingers and my brain of course. So it's yeah, it's interesting. So sometimes I'm just filling time with sight reading actually, which is a good exercise. But it's not uh, what I should. I should do more practicing the pieces for the moment. Sight reading is also, also not always nice to do, but that's not my priority. But sometimes I'm just doing sight reading to fill the time, just to be able to do the five or the six hours. So today it's six hours. Um, yeah, we'll do next video for the next, uh, see how it works. <laughs>
the three next hours you you say i will do from one to four i will do three hours and these one are even more difficult because you are already tired from the three hours you did before so you need more breaks you need longer breaks actually because uh, like i said for example my back start to hurt so it's all small problems we don't really think about when we say i will practice that much time and it's interesting actually um on the positive side i i feel um I feel the strength in my, well, I felt this yesterday, today a bit less actually, I don't think because my hands get tired, I, I feel less the strength. Um, you feel the, the power of being able to control more and also you also see you make progress very quickly when you practice many hours. Now I'm always careful if I feel something is hurting, I start to practice slow stuff. So the, and then I have an electric piano, uh, this morning I practiced on the electric piano, this one is a bit more easy. Strangely enough, enough when I came back to the Steinway, because I developed this kind of power, I'm I had the feeling I was always playing too loud on the piano, and I struggled playing soft because my finger become became so strong. So all interesting uh, experience you you do, and um, actually I'm sight reading a lot. Also, I I was reading ten Bach Prelude President Fuchs today, and then and I last last days I was reading also the. Rachmaninoff Etudes Opus 33, because I played two preludes, I played some other preludes to have some idea. I played the Opus 3 pieces there, because the prelude Opus 3 I'm playing, I played the other piece of this Opus, uh, I played all Chopin, all Chopin preludes, just because I talk. So I'm doing a lot of sight reading, and I, I was reading some Haydn, reading some Scalati sonatas, uh, and now I think I will read some Bach, and actually I will start to work on a chair to have my back just relax. So that's my experience till now, seven hours today, tomorrow eight, let's see how it works. So I just finished my experiment uh, of uh, trying to practice like Sifra. I actually went until 8 hours, um, he, he actually did between 8 and 10, so I more or less has the feeling of what he did. Uh, the reason why I stopped at 8 is because um, I actually started to feel tired in my left hand, it started to hurt a bit, so I, I, I'm sure to be a bit careful. Since I went from 2 to 8, I guess it's less a problem when you always do 8 or always do 6 and then you just augment a bit. The other reason is because I realized that um, Sifra probably had from, like I said before, from uh, he probably said from 8 to 12 I'm doing 4 hours piano and from 1 to 5 4 hours and in this block of hours he of course uh, went for a drink, uh, did a small break or was looking at the score another way not practicing. So I was really measuring all the time I was practicing with this app I have and I'm developing. And I realized for example, uh, yesterday I did seven and seven hours took me 12 hours uh, because uh, in the beginning I, I'm fresh, I can practice a lot and then at the end of the day I get more and more tired and I need always longer breaks. So the experience was really interesting. Yeah, I realized that the things I said on all the way along, um, I realized, um, and I also realized you don't have a life when you practice that much. And uh, so in a way I'm happy, in a way I'm happy that I don't have to practice that much for concerts 
because I'm not sure I would like it because I like to do many other stuff. I like to do sports, be with my wife, play with my dog, uh, talk with friends, do, do other stuff. Uh, social media a bit um, so I realized when you do seven eight nine maybe ten hours piano maybe even more um, you start very early in the morning and you finish very late in the night and your whole day is you try to eat quickly to continue practicing uh, you you are you're like your all, all your days uh, focused on this and all your energy is taken for this and you don't have much time for other stuff and then in the evening you're just very tired and then you, you fall asleep and you start over next day and there must be also, so there is another point is motivation. I, I thought about um, when you practice many hours, the same pieces, this, this uh, boredom comes of always practicing the same stuff. And um, which makes me think about a new point is there must be ways to get over this boredom, for example, practicing the piece in different ways, um, like with no piano, left hand separate, for example analyzing it, um, like having a diff different way of practicing the piece probably keeps the boredom uh, low or you can practice them, lo them longer. But still, there must be a limit on how much you can practice something or maybe it's a state of mind or maybe you get used to this too. Maybe you, when you are used to practice eight hours a day, you get used to boredom, you don't get bored so quickly. I also notice that boredom uh, is can be influenced by the way you think about things. So. If you are focused in your practice by seeing the small problems and by trying to solve them one by one, the boredom doesn't come so quickly. Then when you're just repeating stuff mechanically, you get bored quickly. So th all the stuff I learned by doing this uh, experiment of uh, trying to play like Sifra, the same amount of hours. Now it would be another experiment to do this for a month every day, but I cannot do this since I have a job as a piano teacher. Uh, yeah, and then another stuff also like i realized if you want to do this you have to do only this because you have no time for lessons the day i had lessons uh, it was almost impossible to to stick six hours for example so the last days where i had six seven eight uh, i had no lessons uh, well i had one uh, when i did six hours and yeah it's very difficult to to have lessons in between and practice is almost impossible too you have to, you need this the rest between practice and lessons otherwise the lessons are not focused so I hope you enjoyed the experiment um, and uh, see you for the next experiment maybe.